everybody. Welcome to Kathy's Beautiful Blooms. The title of my video is Ugly Wreaths Don't Sell. Let me explain before anyone gets upset. Anything you make from your heart is beautiful, okay? The video purpose today is not to hurt anyone's feelings, but it's to help you if you're trying to build a wreath business. I, I look online a lot of times at uh, Facebook groups, wreath makers, and things like that, and I read all these comments about how someone, you know, got excited and they put together some wreaths and they signed up for a trade show and they were so hurt and disappointed at the end of the trade show because they didn't sell any. Or another thing issue I see in the wreath world is um, people being cut short of uh, their labor money. When you make a wreath, whatever your materials cost, you should be getting two to three times that in your labor cost. If you cannot make a wreath that will bring in this kind of money, then um, you may have to go sell in a different market or look at your strategy again, because I, my advice is um, don't make a wreath and don't sell a wreath if you cannot make two to three times the profit that you need to be making. So if your materials were $20, then you would you know, need to be selling that wreath right there for $60 to $80, okay? And uh, I have some tips for you guys. When you uh, want to start making wreaths, go ahead and do a little bit of research. There's tons of YouTube videos and tutorials and things like that that you can watch to improve your craft. And go ahead and look on Pinterest and type in luxury wreaths, expensive wreaths, and not to copy their idea, but to get some ideas. You might want to study the color wheel. You'll want to make sure that um, your ribbon and your materials are color, um, I, won't, I don't want to say matchy. Nothing has to be matchy-matchy. Don't get me wrong on that. But you'll want to make sure it's pleasing to the eye, the colors in, of your ribbon and your materials that you choose. And if you're just getting started in wreath making, Go with the lighter colors because they blend. They're so easy to blend together and make look fabulous, okay? And a, a few other comments that I see in the wreath making class is, um, oh, oh, I went to the show and a customer offered me $25. And well, I'm sure you have that much money in your materials, so your feelings are hurt and things like that. So like I said, the first thing you'll want to do is do a little bit of research before you make your wreaths. And you'll go ahead and get an idea of um, how to make top quality wreaths using good quality materials that will sell for two to three times the cost of your materials, okay? Okay, let's get started. I have a great fine wreath here, and I paid $5.99 for this one. And this is an 18 inch grapevine wreath, okay? And the materials I selected today, we're gonna go with light colors because these are easy to coordinate. And I'm gonna show you step by step how to put together a super easy Valentine's spring summer wreath, okay? I bought this whole bunch of flowers right here at my local craft store. And these, see how pretty those are? And they come on this nice long stem. It's just one branch, okay? And these were, um, let me see, these were $20. And when you are making wreaths, you do want to put your quality materials on here, okay? Um, these were $20 and they were 40% off, okay? So I did go ahead and get these. And I'm gonna show you a super easy way if you're getting started in wreath making that you can make a beautiful, simple, elegant, classy, top quality wreath in just a few minutes, okay? All right. So I have all these beautiful branches and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wire cutters. Well, if I can find them, I'm gonna take my wire cutters. Okay, I believe, okay, my little pearl necklace got caught up. But please, uh, whatever you do, don't take this the wrong way because I don't think wreaths are ugly. I think the wreath maker, if they don't have a top quality wreath or their colors aren't coordinating or pleasing to the eye, all you need to do is a little bit of research before you get started. And if you sign up for a trade show, you'll wanna be prepared for that trade show. When I walk through these trade shows and I see a booth that has 12 wreaths and they're really tight together, I don't even look at them, honestly. And I don't think a lot of people do. You'll want to make your booth as pleasing as possible and you'll want to leave your flowers when you're arranging them. They need space. 
your wreath, so when they're ready made, they need space between them. Leave 18 to 20 inches or even more if you can apart. And if you've brought 15 wreaths with you, put six out or seven where, you know, they're plenty spaced apart. And then uh, if they're not selling, just swap them out a couple of different ones. As people walk back on their way back, they might, you know, catch their eye because you want to catch people's eye. Another thing that you can do is you can get you a little headphone microphone and you can stand if, if it's kind of slow or a few people straggling here and there you can stand at the end of your booth and you can have your little microphone on and you can yell out to the crowd hey everyone come on over we're having a a, a giveaway we're having a drawing enter your name and you can win and when you get them over there that's when you engage them in your product but if you're in your booth and uh, a person comes in and they're trying to look don't look desperate. Just keep doing whatever it is you're doing because when you look desperate and you get up and you stand up and you try to coerce them into you know, buying your product, unintentionally of course, but it comes off really strong. It's a turn off and people will leave. So you want to make your booth fun. You might want to play some, I know you can't play loud music, but you might want to play a little music. You might want to have some little snacks. You might have somebody in the back demonstrating your wreath making. But that microphone calling them in, letting them know there's things happening here will uh, get you a lot of business. And if you'll space your wreaths out and you'll just think it through and just don't blindly sign up and make all these wreaths. And if you're a beginner, just go ahead and make a wreath, post it in something like Wreath Makers or whatever Facebook group you're on, social media, whatever platform. Ask people, what do you think about this? And people will lie to you on there. I've seen so many times the unappealing wreath and people will say absolutely stunning or beautiful because these are these pre-designed words that are there and you can just click on it and pop it in somebody's feed and they're thinking you're thinking it's absolutely stunning when it may not be. So what you can do is just go ahead and post it and ask for honest feedback. And don't let that honest feedback hurt your feelings. Make that, let that honest feedback encourage you and inspire you to make the very best wreaths that you can make at the highest profit that you can make. You can do it. If you'll just put a little effort in to your research before you start wreath making, you will be 100% successful, okay? All right, so now I'm just gonna cut these off with my wire cutters. I got, y'all know that I got these out of my husband's truck and he's back there doing some construction because we're out of town right now visiting but I did get them out of there and they work so much better than my craft ones. I'm just gonna cut these off. That's all I'm gonna do. Okay, well, I just said they work good. There we go, okay. I'm just gonna snip every one of them. What I love about, you'll see in a lot of my videos, I do buy my florals in bunches and then I cut them apart. You save so much money doing that. And you do want to buy quality materials because you're gonna get the money for your wreaths if you have quality materials. If you have materials that when you crunch them together, they sound and feel like plastic, that's gonna go in my ugly uh, wreath category. There are exceptions to that. But if you order them on Amazon or at your craft store and you get the, the beautiful soft silks, um, you're gonna have a top quality wreath that's gonna get you the money that you need to not only reimburse yourself, you're not just trying to reimburse yourself for the materials, but you're trying to get paid for your labor. And uh, I encourage everybody to spend some time doing some research before you sign up for a trade show and uh, have fun things planned for your booth and uh, don't act desperate. And these are some little tips that I think really will, you will see profits in your uh, trade show if you will follow these simple, simple, tips okay okay there we go now see that's all i got left of that and look look how many flowers um uh what did i pay it was 40 it was uh 20 dollars and it was 40 percent off so i paid what 12 13 dollars or something like that for this whole bunch okay so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna gather them up and i'm gonna layer these just like this okay just like this now that I have these layered, right here where I'm holding it, I'm gonna put a zip tie on that. Nothing could be easier than this, okay? And like I said, if you're getting started, I don't think you'll get quite as discouraged if you'll use lighter, 
pastel kind of colors and that's perfect time to practice with uh you know easter and spring coming up but just go ahead and practice with those and you'll see how well they blend because if you start getting into your darker colors it does take a bit more skill for that okay all right and this is so much fun to do i i would encourage you you know if you've had a bad experience at a trade show or you made something and you know your family member might have gave you 20 bucks for it because they love you i encourage you don't give up just do a little bit of research and keep going okay all right so i've got this branch here together look how pretty that is and then i'm going to put another one together i'll put three together because i have quite a few here and i'm going to put a zip tie around that okay this is so fun i just love doing this okay there we go and you can when it, if you have your zip tie the right way you can actually hear this zipping and you know because many times i've had to re-zip it and then just clip off the excess okay now well there we go okay there's two ready-made ones and i think i have enough to do two more because i want to put three on this end and three on this end and you're going to see how quickly this comes together okay all right, I hope everybody's doing great today. And uh, my tip, honestly, is not to hurt anyone's feelings. My tip is, from my heart, I want you to do the best that you can and be so proud of yourself and not get discouraged. And don't quit, don't ever quit, okay? I want you to watch this video, go to the store, get you some materials, come back, turn it on, and make it with me, do it step by step. And not even my tutorials, there's so many on YouTube and all these platforms that you can get um, tips, tricks, and ideas, and um, not to copy them, but just to get some inspiration for the crafts and the ideas that you have, just add to it. And it's gonna be perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this last one, I'm gonna zip this last one and y'all see how easy this is, so easy. This is my uh, zip and layer method that I use a lot. And for a beginner, uh, this is a perfect way to do it. Okay, so I didn't put my glasses on right here, ladies and gentlemen. So bear with me one moment while I zip that up. There we go. I really do hope everyone is doing great today. And I have a um, Facebook group, it's called Floral Class with Kathy. And I, if any of you do decide to go get your materials and come back, turn it on and make one with me, please send me a photo to Floral Class with Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y. I would absolutely love to see it. If anybody has questions, I would be more than happy to answer those for you. Well, this one's giving me a little trouble, okay. So now what do we have? A couple stragglers fell off, that's no problem. Okay, so I have one, two, I have three, I have four pieces right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put two pieces together, just like this. Okay, you see this right here? And I'm going to zip these two pieces right here together. Yeah, if you just lay your flat side of your zip tie facing outward, you can just Pop it right in there and it'll be correct every time. And don't worry about these zip ties because they will be covered up. Okay. All right. So I have one big piece. Now I'm going to take this second piece and I'm going to do, let me see how big I want it. Like this. Okay. So I don't need it that tall. I don't think so. I think this will be perfect. All right. So I'm going to zip these two together. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna lay this on our wreath in two pieces. Almost like you can do the same method if you are making a swag, Valentine, Easter, whatever it is. If you're making a swag for your door, you can get a paint stick, um, like those 24 inch paint steer sticks and you can um, put your swag like this on it and add to it and make several layers and it's a good way it's how i start my swags so uh there's a little tip for you okay i want you guys to see this i want you guys to see how fun and how easy this is okay it's very exciting 
All right, let me clean my area. And um, another popular saying that I have is flowers are an instant mood booster. I don't know that it's a popular saying, but I would love to be a popular saying because flowers truly are an instant mood booster. And I want everybody to have flowers in their life, okay? All right, so now I have this one going this way and I have this one and I'm gonna turn this one upside down. See where my stems are at the back? My stems are down here. And now I'm going to see how much room I need right here. And I'm going to connect these two. All right, just like this. All I'm gonna do is connect these two right here. This, the backward stem is here and here. And I'm gonna connect these two right here. And then I'm going to put it on to my wreath. And then we're gonna add a couple of florals and we're gonna do, we're gonna make three, um, a three ribbon bow with our bow dabra. And I'm gonna show you how to curl those ribbons and that's coming up. Okay, so now, now this is gonna be one piece now and it's not going, these are zipped so tight. Zip them as tight as you can get them. And then um, all you see that that is, this is one piece now and it's very flexible and bendable, see? Just like that. So I have my wreath here. So now uh, I'm gonna uh, zip this onto my wreath right here, okay? All right, so that's how that's going. Do you see how easy this is? You can do it with wire or you know whatever that you have. And don't worry about these zip ties showing because I am going to be covering these up. Okay, if I go off camera a little bit, somebody let me know. So I want you guys to be able to see this. Okay, well, let me see. It, it's a bit of a challenge trying to figure out which um, branch you're gonna go under, but I'm trying to pick a big one so it'll be nice and secure. Oh, there's one, okay, perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna zip that up really tight and I'm gonna clip off the excess. This truly is a lot of fun. Okay, so do you guys see how pretty this is already? and how simple, okay? So now let me show you, I'm really excited to show you the flowers I selected. Okay, I got these and uh, I, cut, I cut it off because this was on a, a really long branch and there's a trio of them. And I think these are so pretty. And I just cut the stem because I'm gonna put this right here, right here where I have all these zip ties. Can y'all see those zip ties? It's gonna go right there. Is that like so beautiful? So let me just put that one there right now and then I'll show you the rest of the ones I got. I'm gonna try to get this to go straight down into my twine on my wreath, okay? Just to make that easy for me. And if it doesn't work, then I'll have a backup plan and I'll zip it in there or hot glue it in there, okay? But I believe that I possibly can put this right here under here. I'm going to try because I really would like to see that work. Okay. It makes sure it comes all the way through the back. Oh, it, it works beautifully. Okay, I love that. And I can fluff it up. And, and these are, these have bendable stems, so that is no problem. Okay, let me show you guys what we're doing. Okay. Well, let me take my little tag off my my um, wreath, wreath right here. I love these grapevine wreaths. These are so amazing for uh, spring and summer. And Okay, I got that taken off, okay? There we go, so we got our little bundle here. And I just, um, and you can turn this however you want to, okay? But um, this one, I think this one's gonna be for me, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna put my bow. I'm not gonna put my bow in straight up and down the center. I'm gonna put it off center a bit right here, okay? All right, and then uh, the only other florals I have right here is this, uh, let me get a little closer. I want you guys to see this, this beautiful silk rose. And I've, the stem was like 12 inches and I cut that. Is that not exquisite? A beautiful soft silk uh, rose. And I'm gonna put that one right here I see there's my center right here and I'm gonna come down and I'm just gonna put it right here, right here, right there at the bottom, okay? 
I'm just going to stuff that one down in there if I can find a good branch to go under because the stem is quite thick on this one. Let me see if I can or not. And then I'll bend it upward like that. Put some of these this way. I may have to glue that or zip this one if it doesn't look right. But I think that's going to be that's going to be pretty. And then I bought a one hydrangea and I cut it all up. This was one beautiful hydrangea and it met and the color matches uh, these beautiful flowers right here see they match they match actually perfect and you can't go wrong with decorating with hydrangeas okay so now I'm gonna put me a hydrangea down here right there by my beautiful rose and these are my little filler hydrangeas so I'm just gonna pop them in there wherever I can see a spot that I might need Okay, like that, and then put, pop some up here. And then, um, this is so pretty. I just love um, these little flowers. So, okay, I'm gonna put some here, and I'll put an extra one up here at the top, I think. And it might fall out. If it does, then I will be hot gluing that baby in there. Okay, all right, so let's see how this is gonna look, where we're at. These are bending. I need this to. I need this one to bend over this way. Uh, and I'm uh, a lot. You can hot glue your stems in here if they don't cooperate with you. And if you have any excess that you don't need, just go ahead and feel free to cut that off. Okay. Okay. There we go. Right. And let's see what else could we do. Okay. This is how it's looking so far, and I am going to put some more hydrangeas down here. I kind of surround this with hydrangeas, and I do have another piece, and I'm going to put, I want this to be looking this way. Okay, let me work on the hydrangeas in another minute, because I do need to fill this area with our hydrangeas, and I might have to add another one here, if that's okay. Okay. So this is what we have so far, okay, and our bow is going to go right here. Okay, so for our bow, let me see what I got. I got three ribbons. I got this one, this one, and this one, okay. So um, to make your three bows, let me go ahead and pop these open. I hope all of you are still with me. I'm sorry, I should have already opened these. But sometimes I like to do it step by step from, from beginning to end without editing anything out. Because if I do make errors and stuff like that, I don't mind if you see it because if it happens to you, then you'll see what I did. It might not be the right, I don't do always the right thing with my errors, but it might help you. Okay, all right. So these are just beautiful, beautiful ribbons. And I'm making them this color because it's Valentine's Day coming up. But when Valentine's Day is over, I'm going to keep this wreath form and I'm going to change out my ribbons. And then um, when summer comes, I might um, add in some blue hydrangeas to this and change my ribbon again. Because I believe in reusing things when the season changes. Okay, so we have these open. Give me one second to get my area cleaned up just a little bit. Uh, let me see. There it goes. Okay, so you get a piece of floral wire and you'll just cut it about 20 inches and fold it in half. That's all that you do with that. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just going to fold this in half. And the two ends, I like to twist these together because it makes it easier when you come up to tie your ribbons off. Okay, so I just fold this in half, and I have a little loop right here through my finger, and I'm going to put this straight down into my bodabra, just like this. We are going to make a three ribbon bow 
with curls for our fabulous wreath, okay? All right, so, and I'm just gonna tuck it down, and I, I'm trying to figure out which one I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one, and I'm gonna cut this extra piece off here. That one, we don't need that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch it about half an inch, and I'm going to twist it where the bottom of the ribbon is down. I'm going to push it straight down into my bodabra. And then I'm going to come up and over the top. The pretty side of my ribbon, the pretty side of my ribbon is it's right here. And it's I can see it. It's facing me, okay? And I think I'm going to do about, I don't know, about five or six inch loops. And at the top, I'm going to pinch it together, and I'm going to twist it where it's upside down and push it straight down. Yeah, I think, I think that's going to be pretty good. And then I'm going to come over the top with uh, my pretty side. Yes, with my pretty side, it's going to come over the top. You can just drop your ribbon. It's fine. Okay, and I'm going to pinch it right here. And then I'm going to twist it, okay? And then I'm going to check and see if these are about the same. And they are, okay? Can you guys see good? Okay. So now I'm going to come back over the top again. Okay. I think I probably should have made them a little bit bigger. But I think it's going to work. Okay. There we go. So we're just going to follow this process and we're going to do three loops, okay? Okay. Three loops is all we're going to do with this material. Okay. There we go. There we go. And just just keep an eye on it and kind of see if they're if they match, okay? There we go. And I I didn't do my twist. Get my twist. Come back over the top. The pretty side is on the pretty side is on top. The three. There's three. I think we have a visitor. Um we are out of town in the country. At my sister-in-law's house and i think we do have a visitor because um our dog grace is barking okay so when you this is three and three and when you come back over the top like this you don't have to do anything just uh, let this drape down as long as you might want your curly ribbon i'm just gonna eye it right there now my next color is going to be i think i'm going to do the light pink i'm just cut this excess they fold the ribbon when you get it at the end. Okay, so, and it doesn't really matter where you start. Okay, so I'm going to uh, fold this about half an inch and go down and twist it. Same thing. And I'm going to go over the top. And when I make this one, I'm going to come in about half an inch. I don't need it quite to be quite as big as my other one. Just about half an inch on this one. Okay. That's all I'm going to do on this one. I'm going to twist it. Okay. And then my pretty side is coming over the top. And they're about the same. And I'm going to make three loops again. Okay. All right. 